Oh my goodness. Fuck, I can't like the Beatles. He doesn't care about them. (laughs) (laughs) What, the Beatles? Hell no. Can you imagine? John Lennon's not who you think he was, guys. Do some research. (laughs) So steez. So steez. And we're back like we never left. It's me, Gravel Bear. We are live here at Timeless Studios. And I hope you guys enjoyed your summer. I know I did. Got some traveling in and um, just ready for the fall now. And first off, I want to thank everybody who came out to our Dear Summer event at Madison Live. It was crazy. Um, Big shout out to Too Rich and Lantana, Ibby, Rye, Zaba. I mean, it was it was great. Um, I really appreciate everyone came out, uh, helped celebrate my birthday in a major way. Um, so I appreciate that. And we've got more live events coming soon, so stay tapped in. But today's show, we've got a big one ready for you. Uh, first off, we're going to talk to our buddy Ash at the Mockby. We're teaming up with him to present the Crisscross Fest on October 8th. Um, it's going to be a costume party, and we've got some great performers for you guys. First off, we've got Joe Ead, friend of the show. You never know who he's going to bring along. Um, we've got Rye, also a friend of the show. Jay Hill from POC is hitting us with the set. And our guest today, who's in the booth, and we are interviewing him for the first time, Ibby Too Vicious. It's going to be a great show. That's October 8th at the Mock B. Um, we're going to have so much fun. So I hope you guys come out. Uh, tickets are on sale now. And before we get into this game with Ibby Too Vicious, we're going to kick it over to Ash and let him introduce himself to you guys. So we'll be right back. What's up, guys? My name's Ash. You can call me Ash. Um, I'm a visual artist in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I do lots of different things like graphic design. I paint. I draw. I'm about to start tattooing. And I'm also an event curator. So I'm throwing a a show at the Mock B called Crisscross, October 8th. We're going to have lots of dope artists, a lot of people that are involved with donuts and alcohol, like It'd Be Too Vicious, who's in the studio tonight. You know, we're going to have Joe Ede. We're going to have some dope bands like Wit and Goof Juice. We're going to be wearing costumes. We're going to be fucking having a ball. I get really... <laughs> yeah, so October 8th at the Mock B. Be there, you know? It's going to be great. October 8th, the mock be. Be there. And as promised, we are here with Ibby Too Vicious. We're going mano and mano in a game of two in tune, where we are going to hear a clip of a song, and each one of us has to guess it. You get one point for the correct artist and another point for the correct song. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. The only thing that matters is if you win. So perfect. You better win. So Aaron, us. we've got Aaron back. She's hey our guys. game lady. She's going to kick this off. So I'm ready when you are. That's right, Gravel. We are here for two in tune. Are you ready for the first clip? Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. Two Let's seconds. Go. Here it comes. Hope you got some backup if you creeping on me. That's what two that seconds was two sounds seconds? like. Two seconds? Okay. Well, I'm. God, my handwriting is so bad. Right. <laughs> you wrote Drake no, on, on the, the back other side. side. On the back side. I was practicing my bubble letters. We love Drake. Okay, three, right. two, one. Travis Scott, something. I can't remember the song either. It is Outside by Travis Scott. <sighs> one point for each of you. One point's better than no points. That's what we used to say growing up. That's- All right, well, we're ready for the next one. Tied up, one to one. All right, here's the next two second audio clip. Oh God, we know this one. <laughs> this I was is hoping you guys bed. would. My God, I was—I never know. Oh, that's a good one. It's a great song. Great video. All right, three, two, one. I went with "Thank You Next" by Thank Ariana you Grande. Next. Ariana Grande. This is "Thank You Next" by Ariana Grande. Fuck yeah! Two points for each of you. Okay. It's Tied still three, tied three. up. Three to three. Next audio clip is. Oh. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, damn, I'm forgetting the title. I know what this is, though. I think Rowell's got it. Who? Oh. He wrote a lot of words. <laughs> I don't even, I'm not even gonna guess the song title because that's disrespectful if I get it wrong. Three, two, one. <laughs> uh, it's the Beatles. Okay. Is that correct? Yeah, what'd you put? Uh, I went the Beatles, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. That's correct. Uh, this no, is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by the Beatles. Damn. Fuck yeah. All so right. two and that's one right. there. Kaleidoscope eyes, you know, trippy. Yeah. I knew it was one of the trippy. I found the <laughs> album that's one, but I forget the yeah. All right, it's five to four. Gravel's in the lead. That's where the men get separated from the boys, ladies and gents. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our next two second clip. Worry about being the best out. Oh, <laughs> Can I get a replay? Yeah, of course. Don't worry about being the best out. Damn. You, come on. Don't worry about being the best out. Let's just think about what comes next. Oh, I'm fumbling so hard right now. Don't think about it. <laughs> don't think about it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't need, I'm, I'm good. I'm ready. <laughs> Three, two, one. I know it's Drake. I don't know it's Drake. Too much. Too it's much. too much by Drake. Don't think about it too much. You got Guile Chester oh, that and was you didn't the get hair. that. Because I, I know the good ones. No. Okay. That is a good one. That's a great one. All right. We'll have to do a Drake bracket someday on here. All right. Next two second clip. Rich, and I want to say shout out to Oh, we know this. Come on now. Come on. Oh, yeah. This is me. Rich, and I want to say shout out to the dead. Now I flex. Hey. Shout out to the dead. To the dead. To the dead. I'm a shout hot girl. <laughs> so I'm true. a hot girl. We actually saw him at Bogarts, and it was fucking Yeah, I was at that show, together. too. That show was insane. Oh, my God. We were all there. This show was crazy. Was. I got the hoodie. It kind of sucked. I, I need to talk about That's that. That's a good shirt. Though. Um... The shirt was nice. Yeah. Three, two, one. I went Baby King, trademark USA. Yup. On that bitch. Yo. That is the answer. <laughs> Fuck yeah, guys. Don't All right, what's the bitch. score? I think it's... It's nine to seven. I'm seven? Yeah. <laughs> but you're ten in our hearts, right? <laughs> All right. Song number six. And I know you will too. <sighs> Damn. <sighs> come on. I'm fumbling. Oh, fun, and I know you will too. Fuck. Okay, you guys ready? I guess. Yeah. Three, two, one. I want Borderline Tame Impala. Oh, I don't think it's Borderline, though. I don't think it is. Yeah, I can't remember the name. Yeah. Tame Impala. It's Eventually by yeah. Tame uh, Impala. Yeah. Uh, I could sing the rest of the song. All right, that's, still, for that's, each curious, right? that's the name of the game. It's uh, 10 to 8. Next audio clip. <laughs> Damn, what is this one? Fuck. <laughs> so, um, I hope Gravel gets it and he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you might, this is like, you might misspell this one. This I is like, this is a spelling, this is like a spelling test, low key. I don't even know how to say it, so. <laughs> Tell us what you wrote down. I couldn't remember the name of the song, but Jason Mraz? <laughs> <laughs> Are you trolling or are you being for real? I can't, I can't I tell. Know. I can't tell. <laughs> I feel like he's so It has to be. has to be. That's Sibirai Tendencies, bro. Every two vicious. Debut oh, single. Debut single, bro. Okay. Oh, not All right. Honey me a rock star oh, bitch, bro. Shit, it's tied up now. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so with a zero oh, on that so one. All right, I gotta pick up my game. I just feel like one of my songs is gonna come up. I, I didn't know which one it was gonna, yeah, I, I didn't do it the first time. <laughs> okay, uh, next two second audio clip is as follows. Oh, come on. <laughs> it might be one of the most iconic oh, songs oh my God. that anyone should be able to recognize off. Point five seconds of audio. You don't know I know so much lore about this guy, and I'm forgetting his name. I like did so much research into this guy one time. I don't know if I got it right. I pray to God. Play it again, right? 
I'm way off. <laughs> Wait, fuck. I'm definitely gonna have to tell us what the first thing you wrote was. Or am I wrong? Oh, I remember. I'm gonna just, I think I got it wrong. <laughs> Are you prepared? I fucking prepared, got it wrong, bro? but like, I know this song. Awesome. Alright, I'm putting, I'm calling it. Three, two, one. Somebody that I used to know. It's the, his name's like Goye or something. It's or, Gautier. Gautier. It? I knew yeah. it was some like it's some foreign bit, thing. Like, 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 oh, I, what a great song. I, I just don't know how to spell I'm it. I'm giving that to I you. Yeah. Yeah, fucking yeah. We're gonna go yeah, two zero funny. again. Damn. Which okay. Means Abby, now I gotta, okay. Yeah. I think he's like now Australian. It's twelve to ten. Abby's winning by two. Oh, I'm up. Oh, it's crazy how up. things change in this game, folks. One song to change everything. All right, you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. Uh oh. The pendulum is swinging back the other way. <laughs> I'm gonna name a song, right? This is where it pays to be 30, folks. I ain't 30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I got nothing to say. Okay, <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> I went with Nirvana, Lithium. Oh, I was going to go yeah. Nirvana, too. This, this is lithium. In Bloom by Nirvana. It was oh, Nirvana. Oh, I should have got on one. Damn it. I should have put that down. Yeah, you should have. Sorry, yeah. Mom. Sorry, Mom. Is that off of... Um, what's the Black and White album cover? Bleach. Is that Bleach? I don't think so. I think it's off of Van Utero. Van Utero? Oh, really? I think so, too. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Your next two-second audio clip is... Oh, this is the last one. I have a tiebreaker if there's a tie. Wait, all what's right. the score right now? Thirty-seven. It's twelve to eleven. Okay, twelve bet. to eleven. It all comes okay, down bet. to this one, guys. Okay, this is where the bread is made. Twelve to eleven. This is really serious. You gotta have something written down, right? I got like an <laughs> artist something. guess, okay. but I'm probably wrong, I think. There's no way you're wrong. I'm okay, wrong. three, two, one. I went with um, Lil Wayne, Get Money. I went with Lil Wayne, too. I didn't know the song. We have man. to do the tiebreaker because it's 12 12 now. Who saw this coming? I really didn't because if you guys both get this one, then I don't know. I didn't see this coming. All right, here is your tiebreaker two second audio clip. Can I get a replay? <laughs> this is where we win it, guys. This is truly where the men. <laughs> my guess, voice, whatever. My guess might be disrespectful. I don't know who this is. It's okay. It's okay. It's, uh, it's gonna do we'll keep it for the comedy content. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Is this One Direction? Oh my God! I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like some like <laughs> pop rock shit. I don't even know. Well, I have no idea. I'm, I'm what's so What's the lost. answer, Gravel? The answer would be um, The Killers, Mr. Brightside. Oh, that so true. Oh, oh, that's actually and the worst. We have I our song. That's winner. actually so That's, that's not brand for me. I hate that song for real. Well, I know what I said earlier, 13. but we're all winners here. No, I have a rule. If that song comes out at a party, I leave. Like the I Killers? Think, yeah. No. Okay. Mr. Brightside? I hate that song. I like the other one better. Um, I don't think I've ever heard that full song play when out ever young. in my life. Yeah, it was the a... Jesus one? Yeah. Or Are We Dancer? <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, the there's another fun game of two in, two in tune. Had to pick up the dub, you know. We can't go easy on it. Yeah, here, I fumbled that, know, like, for sure. <laughs> one Direction? <laughs> it was. It was. He, he, brought, he brought his A game, and um, appreciate you guys watching. We're going to get into an interview right now with this man right beside me. We'll see you in a second. And we're here for the first time ever making his DNA debut. The one, the only, It'd be Too Vicious. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on here, man. We've been to do this for a while. And I'm glad you're here, man. Um, little funny story on how we met was right here at Timeless Studios at a plug-and-play event, just dropping by... Trying to see some, you know, new artists and check what's going on. Didn't really expect to find, you know, 
anyone that would blow me away, just to be honest. But <laughs> I come in here and it's a bunch of faces I've never seen before. And then this man, Ibby, gets up there, plays some crazy shit. I think it was a uh, cybernetic. Tennessee. No, <laughs> Cyberite. Cyberite. Yeah. I think that's it. It was I did two vicious and I did first one was like one of my chill ones. I can't remember which one. But I think two vicious is the one that you were like really fucking yeah, with. Yeah, either one of one of them. One of the two <laughs> I was really fucking with. Um and I was like, yo, we gotta get you on. Let's let's link up. And from there, you know, then Dear Summer. Yeah. Crazy, crazy performance there. I think you won a lot of new friends. So um, for sure. Definitely glad you glad we got you here now. So, and as this is our first time meeting, um, when did you start making music? Take yeah, us back. So I started pretty recently in terms of I think compared to like a lot of people. So I started, I think I made my very first song November 2020. So oh, it's wow. been like probably like a year and a half. And so I've been writing for a while. So like when I was like, I think that's what I've been like my whole life as a writer. So when I was like really young, like elementary school, I used to write short stories and then I would sell them to my classmates for like 50 <laughs> cents. And I oh, thought wow. I was making bank. But um, <laughs> that was probably my first dip into like being a writer. And I think that's just something I've like always been into. And then I think when I was 16, I started writing like it was poetry stuff. I wasn't anything that I was like sharing or posting, just like things I would write in my journals uh, just for myself. And then eventually I managed to get to the music part. And that was so my best friend, 380 Mello, um, he's a rapper. And so he's been making music for years and years. And music, I think it's something I've always wanted to do. And then I never had like really the confidence to do it. And then I think like seeing him find some kind of success with it, it kind of gave me the confidence to go after it too. So that's kind of how that started. So I saw him like finding some form of success with it. And I was like, you know, like this is also my dream. Like I also want to make music. Like why should I just let like confidence stop me or something like small like that so then i made my first song november 2020 at the old timeless location when they were still in that office building yeah <laughs> rest in peace a lot of great memories there uh, i made my first song there and then it was like shitty it was so bad and then so like, i think like the first five months of me making music was like pretty rough it was a lot of like stuff that i wasn't proud of or anything i would post or share and then in March 2021 is when I made Sybarite, which was like my first single that I ever put out. And that one was something that I was like, this is the lane that I kind of want to focus on. Like I was experimenting with a different bunch of different type of music and genres and what I wanted to do. I was still figuring that out. I still kind of am figuring that out um, even today. But Sybarite was like the first one that I was like, this is something that I'm like proud of putting out there and showing people. And so that was, it took me five months to get to that point, I think. And there was a lot of times where I wanted to like give up at some point because I was like, damn, I'm just like bad at this. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm not good at this. I'm not going to make it work. But um, I'm glad I didn't. Super glad I didn't. I think I can speak for everyone. We're, we are, we're glad too. Because yeah. I mean, like you said, you've only got a couple songs out right now, but you're killing it and you have a very different sound. And that's what kind of attracted me to your music. Because I've been doing this, I hear rap, 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 yeah. rap, rap, rap. rap. And, um, you know, you came in, gave us some different, I don't even know how to explain the sound for real. It's kind of almost like a little pop, a little yeah. punk, a little yeah. rage, a little, there's a little rap in there. Um, yeah. who, who are some of your influences when it comes to music? Yeah, my, I think my biggest ones um, would be like Steve Jobs. He didn't make music, but I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. He's, I inspire, he inspires me in like other ways just in terms of like, methodology and kind of what he did and kind of how, like every industry he had a hand in, he kind of like shifted so that kind of inspires me a lot um the beatles i think what they did just music as a whole not even just like their genre of like pop or rock or whatever you want to call it um inspired by them a lot um young thug inspires me a lot free the man yeah free young thug free big slime bro um <laughs> uh jaden smith big influence too those are probably the big four that i think i'd take a lot from and it's I kind of look at I look for I think what inspires me about those people is that they kind of like synthesize something new with what was like made before. I mean, the Beatles, obviously, like, you know, like the Beatles, they shifted all of song structure as today. Like mm -hmm. you still see their influence in like everybody today. And just the way that they approach music was so different from like everyone else that was doing it back then. So like that about them was like super inspiring to me, like creating something totally new. I mean, Young Thug is like super known for that. I mean, everything he's done is just like insane. Uh, and he just takes completely new blends and just like tries, you know, he's not afraid to try mm -hmm. different things and kind of put himself out there like that experimental wise. 
Um, so that really surprised me. I think Jaden's kind of the same way. Like he's one of those people with like Kanye and Tyler, where like every album he's going for a different sound. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that I appreciate a lot in artists too, is when they kind of go that direction where they try something new with every album and don't kind of like stay consistently. Yeah, I mean that's that's the kind of music I like. I, like I just said, I don't like listening to the same album over and right. over and again, over again. And yeah. a lot of artists fall in that trap. But I'm glad you said Young Thug because he's someone yeah. that I've I've liked from the Love beginning, and he's just yeah. crazy lyrics that yeah. don't make sense Insane, sometimes. But right? like yeah. the beats and the singing and the flow, it's 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 new and different, and um, I really appreciate that. Um, uh, like I said, you've got a couple songs out. One you just released, Party Alone. Yeah great one um what's the reception been like on that party alone, it's been good um i think so i was kind of doing this i had this idea about a while ago probably like a year ago where i was gonna do i was gonna have one side be a v side kind of like an a side but a v side because vicious and then like a b <laughs> side which would be benevolent so that was like an original idea that i had for my that was my one of the first ideas i had for like my project that i'm working on was i was gonna have like the first half be kind of like the rock stuff and the B side be like the more poppy stuff like mm -hmm. Amethyst and Party Alone. I think I'm gonna scrap that idea and scrap the B side. I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. Party Alone might be the last like pop song that I make. No. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll see. But um, it's been good. I think people uh, like there's it's interesting because I can kind of see the distinction between people that enjoy like Closed Doors and Sybarite and people that enjoy like Amethyst and Party Alone. Mm -hmm. And I can kind of see like the distinction and kind of like the crowds that enjoy which type, you know? Um, so that's been super interesting. It's kind of like, I think the people who are big fans of Amethyst enjoyed Party Alone a lot. I think the reception on that one probably, like, I think it wasn't the best. Or not, the, I mean, people liked the song. I think it didn't do as well as I thought it would do. Like, Closed Doors, and this is like interesting too, because um, I think, a, so usually when I drop a song, like that new one stays on the top of my like most popular songs, mm -hmm. right? Because that's the one getting streamed the most. But Closed Doors is like back at my number one song. Like Closed uh -huh. Doors gets streamed like more daily than Party Alone does. And I think that like just tells me a lot about like the type of people that enjoy my music. I think probably enjoy like the Closed Doors type of sound that I made. Um, and I think I'm going to go more in that direction, which is like, so I was like good. I was kind of happy. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of happy that like people like Closed Doors more than Party Alone, you know, because um, that's kind of the direction that I wanted to go into. But it was good. I definitely like it. Was, it's a fun song. I wrote that one in 2021. April and back then I was like six months into making music is when I wrote Party Alone and so my singing was kind of off when I originally recorded it so I never wanted to release it. I had it on SoundCloud at first like it's been it was on SoundCloud for probably a year and I took it off like I think the week before I dropped it on Spotify but like the original version was on SoundCloud for a while because um, I thought it was just going to be a throwaway and I re-recorded it April 2022 like damn near a year later I just like forgotten about it I thought about the song and I was like I'm going to try re-recording this see what happens and it sounded a lot better like sounded what I wanted to sound like a year ago so I decided I think it'd be like a good like summer vibe to come yeah. out with yeah I mean it's a good problem to have when you have too many good songs and you know, <laughs> the older ones more popular yeah, than the newer one like I mean <laughs> it's all good like they all, they all sound great um, and I mean a lot of artists, they can do well in the booth and record all this, but when it comes time to perform, they're not as good. Mm -hmm. Luckily, you don't have that problem <laughs> because a lot of people at Dear Summer, our show we did, he, um, you left with a lot of fans. You really brought yeah. the energy. You're, you know, a great performer. So is that something you enjoy doing? 100%. Yeah. And thank you again for putting me on that show. That was definitely thanks, like thanks for my joining. favorite, best show I've done so far. Um, yeah, I think performing, I mean, everything about music is low-key my favorite thing. And I like, I'll say like performing is my favorite thing to do, but I like all of it. But performing is definitely like, I love performing. I love being on stage. I love, um, entertaining people. I think is really what it is, right? You want to be, you know, when people look at artists, they're also entertainers. And, you know, if you want to entertain people, then you kind of got to do certain things, like keep people engaged with you. Um, and that's something I've been learning along the way. So like, I look at, you know, we have film from some of my like first couple shows that Ty and Jake have shot for me. And, you know, when I look back at that, I can kind of like see where I was, what I was doing wrong and improve on that. That's kind of something we do with like every single show. It's kind of like reviewing like post game film, like football. Like <laughs> that's basically what it is. You know, it's kind of like a sport. So like uh, they'll, they'll usually record my whole set and we go through it, just kind of look at things. I notice like where I can include certain 
just things to say to engage with the crowd or like if I could do something new as like an ad lib or just try something different here and there. So like that's kind of something we do a lot and I can kind of like see how I've progressed with that. So like performing is definitely something that I like intentionally try to improve on. It's not something where I'm like winging it every single time. Like I definitely, I have planned out things for my set for sure. Like things I want to say in between songs, things that I want to say like during songs. So that's something that I definitely plan out and make sure that, you know, I try to give like the best show I possibly can every single time. Um, and with performing, you know, usually when I have like in school, when I have like public speaking type of stuff, like presentations or anything like that, you would always get kind of like nerves, anxiety, right? Oh, when for you're, sure. Like, you got to yeah. perform for like 30 people or like, um, cause that's a performance too, damn near like a presentation, right? That's a performance in a way. Um, I usually have all these nerves, anxiety, but I remember my very first show, uh, it was in March 2021 before I had any music out. My very first show, I didn't have a single song out. I was on my friend, uh, 380 Mellow Person, before I was on his set and I had like two or three songs that I, I think it was two, I think I only did two songs, um, but I didn't have anything out yet. But I remember like that whole day and like when I got on stage, I didn't feel like any nerves at all. Like that was like one of those few things where I thought I was going to, and I wasn't like drunk or anything. I was, I was like, I was pretty sober, you know, I wasn't even like, not even like drunk shit. It was like, um, I just like, it felt like, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing in a way, you know, and it was like, I didn't have any of that nerves, anxiety or nervous that I usually get when I'm doing shit like that. That's, yeah, that's weird. You said this stuff about like a presentation in school. Cause like I used to be the most shy person ever, yeah. but like once I took like speech class, I had to take speech in college. Yeah. And after that, I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Like yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do the best I can. And right? Who cares? Yeah. They're all, it doesn't matter. And but. everyone's in the same boat too. And it's kind of the same. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. Right. You just kind of like, you're going to put your best self out there see what happens and hopefully yeah, it works out. Laugh right? at you, okay. Right, you're, yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so October 8th, Crisscross Fest at the Mock B. What can they expect from you, you know, as a performance? Definitely. What are, you, what are you bringing with you? I'm bringing that vicious energy, as always. You know that. And I need, I need everyone to come to Vicious, as always, as they always do. Um, definitely going to have some new songs to perform that I haven't performed before. So uh -huh. I've just been working on some new shit that I haven't, like, performed before yet. So Chris Cross Fest will probably be the first time I debut a couple songs. Hopefully, uh, by then, my new single will be out, Astro Girl. So that'll be out there by then. So people will have time to, you know, learn the lyrics to that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, same thing, you know, same thing as always. I'm going to bring the vicious energy, try to like amp up the crowd, give a good show, give a good performance. You know, that's the job as always. Hell yeah, man. I cannot wait. October 8th at the Mock B. Tickets on sale now. But, you know, we're about, we're over halfway, you know, done with 2022. Uh, what are your plans for the rest of the year? We get an album, EP, yeah. more videos. What's going on? So definitely for Astro Girl, definitely going to be a movie for that one, a whole last production. Not even I'm a excited video. for that one. Yeah, movie. this one's going to okay. be a fucking movie for okay. sure. Yeah, so we've been went planning that one out right now and working that out, um, getting the song mixed right now. So getting all, just all the promo shit together for that, ready for the release. And then album-wise, I'm trying to have my tape done by like, early spring 2023 that's like okay. i'm not gonna even exact date or anything yet because i don't even know myself but hopefully <laughs> hopefully by spring 2023 we'll have the we'll have the album hell yeah man we are excited um where can people keep up with you um so yeah i'm on all platforms instagram if you just look up av2 vicious i'll come up spotify youtube Apple Music, Tidal, Deezer, all that stuff all on there. So catch me there. Um, yeah, if you just even if you Google it be too vicious, it'll come up. I B B I too vicious, and it'll be there. Cool, man. Um, really appreciate you coming in. Great to chop it up with you. I'm sure, it won't be your first time here. We'll definitely bring you back. And um, no cap, man. This this guy is one of my favorite new young artists um, outside of Cincinnati, even just all over. So tap in with him. He's making great music, making something different. Um. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having me here, man. For show. Sure. Appreciate you. And we are getting an exclusive, right? Yeah. Exclusive snippet of Astro Girl right now. That's what we're about to do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get it. Quick we're snippet. excited. We Let's bring the exclusives, baby. We'll be right back. That's the DNA way. All right, and another great episode in the books. Want to give a big shout out to Ash for stopping by. Um. So excited for Criss Cross Fest. That's October 8th at the Mock B. Tickets on sale now. Hit the link in the bio. Uh, we're going all the way up. And I want to see who has got the best costume. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and a major shout out to Ibby 2 Vicious. One of my favorite new artists here in Cincinnati. Um, glad we linked up. Great talking to him. 
And um, we're going to leave you guys with an unreleased snippet of his new song, Astro Girl. I'm excited. We're bringing you the exclusives first right here at Donuts and Alcohol. As always, I'm Gravel Bear, and we'll see you in two weeks. Peace out, y'all. Yo, say be too vicious, I'm a donut and alcohol. About to give you guys an exclusive snippet of my new single, Astro Girl. Think that you know me, I promise you don't. Think that you own me, I promise you don't. She don't let me, she just like this lifestyle Chill in my penthouse, drink up till she wild I don't think we're gonna figure this out Forget it for now, I just want you right now She put crystals in my room, but I prefer them on my neck Rubies on my purse, looking like I made out check I'm a tar, she's a Leo, so you know we get intense It's like a thousand stars of land when we first met A oh, big shout out Adam and No Say Span for producing this one This will be out in about a month or so Astro girl, it be too vicious. <laughs>